to hit.
funny you say that because I was looking at some old tapes of you mm -hmm. when you were first starting out with mm -hmm. Wall of Voodoo on uh -huh. TV uh -huh. on Richard Blade shows and things mm -hmm. like that and you were far from it then you were poised and you were mm -hmm. you're Mr. Showbiz back in the early 80s you, you've in all honesty you've been confident doing this since you first started right in terms of being in the spotlight I, I just don't um, I take my music seriously but I don't really take myself that seriously no. 
or 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 th things like this. So, yeah. but but uh, at the same time, you know, I never really know what I'm going to say until it comes out. So, <laughs> no, if I, I don't want to be censored. Right, right, right. <laughs> talk talk about where you are right now with everything. Yeah. Oh, the knocking's coming up. Is the knocking this way? But you, then. Mm -hmm. kind of apropos to kind of rehearsing it right next to Anna Walt Lumber. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, anything we need there in terms of hardware is right there, you know. Nails, wood, drywall. So, mm -hmm. There you go. There you go. Mm -hmm. Talk about where you are right now. You're between, you're between records. Talk about this last record. And, and uh, the last record we put out was a record called Snake Bite. That came out last year. And then we're working on a new record now. And uh, we don't have a title for it yet, but it'll be out this summer. It'll be out in August. Mm -hmm. And then um, we're kind of always on tour now. We're always traveling around the U.S. or we go back and forth to Europe. We well, got back from Italy a couple months ago on a, a great tour we did there. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, we're just kind of making music and just enjoying ourselves. How great is it to be at that point in your career when you have a built-in fan base and probably never growing fan base from the stuff you do, to be able to go to Europe, to be able to sell out shows here? It kind of, the ball never stops, right? Well, I mean, you just kind of have a lot of gratitude about it, really. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of, uh, a lot of the pressure is off from, uh, I guess, having to deliver something that, um, you know, sells a million, billion copies, you know? And you just have a, 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 the ability to go around and, and play. Mm -hmm. When was the last time you felt pressure or concern? Since you've been solo, was it nervous wreck, nerve wracking at first, but then did that kind of wear off quickly? Or? I was like about five minutes before we sat down here and started to talk. I thought to myself, oh no, television. And, uh, you know, what, what's that going to be like? And other than that, I, I guess I only, I, I put pressure on myself in terms of songwriting. I'll, I'll give myself an assignment. and That, that is pressure, and, um, but that's pressure I bring on to get the job done. You just don't get anything done unless you give yourself some sort of, you know, assignment or pressure or something. But um, nothing like the pressure from when I was in my 30s or something like that, or, or, or 20s. I, I think after a while you realize that you are, um, you know, uh, who you are, and there's really not much you can do to change it. And so you just want to make more of what you do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. At what point do you kind of realize you have a certain persona and people think of you as a certain way, and lots of things kind of get thrown your way in terms of Troubadour or L.A. Balladeer and stuff like that? How much of that do you kind of take on? How much of that do you push off? I, I, I don't know. I, don't, I, I, I really try to avoid it. I don't think about it very much. You know, yeah. when I start thinking about it, then I start thinking about, um, uh, well, uh, you know, uh, I thought I knew who I was, and now someone's telling me who I am, so I better maybe be that, and then, no, I can't do that. And so it just becomes a lot of worthless information. But, you know, it's the old story. Either, you know, people who don't have a, quote, personality are in search of one, and the people that have too much of one are trying to get rid of it. So, right, right. You know. Talk about how your music's changed in, ter in terms of your solo career over the years. It seems like you're doing more acoustic stuff, at least from mm -hmm. on the outside, and you've gotten kind of little, little roots here. Some of the stuff you used to maybe sing about, you're actually kind of incorporating into your music in terms of stuff like that. Is that the truth from where I sit? Is that what you're actually doing? Or? Well, for a while I traveled around with a five or six person band, and um, I was getting more requests to do an acoustic thing. and. Um, uh, so we put together a, a kind of acoustic trio that really allows us to, you know, just bolt out of Los Angeles at a moment's notice and go play almost anywhere. But um, it's certainly not like a, you know, a, 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 a new direction for me. I've always played acoustic music and enjoyed it. But uh, uh, we still have another, you know, band of uh, electric musicians that we add into the acoustic uh, configuration. And, and when it's uh, called on to be larger, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talk about, you mentioned Los Angeles, talk about being an L.A. musician, you've been an L.A. musician since your career really started. What does L.A. mean to you? How does that kind of incorporate it into your, your music over the years? Well, um, L.A. So, certainly changed a lot, you know, for everybody. Um, I guess, um, you know, there's, um, there's an aspect of, uh, you know, myth-making that goes along with Los Angeles because of the, the films and, and just a lot of, um, a lot of masquerade that I, I find in, in Los Angeles, and uh, it's, it's uh, always been kind of a, a city that's, that's, that's pretty rife for, uh, for a lot of uh, uh, songs, uh, simply because what you see is really not sometimes what's there. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's a mystery, and 
uh, delving into that puzzle of, of, of what something really is as, as opposed to how it's presented is um, uh, always has interested me. So um, that deals with situations and people and relationships and, and uh, just life in general. So it's, it's an unusual city in that, that, that regard. I mean, you know, you, um, you know that uh, Los Angeles has this uh, idea of what it is, but um, it never, never quite uh, gets pinned down as to really what that is. So um, it's like, uh, I guess the old uh, Gertrude Stein quote, you know, when she came to Los Angeles, she wrote back to her friends and said that there was no there there. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I still think it's kind of that way. I, I get confused here. It's a little uh, uh, surrealistic uh, city, you know. In a lot of ways, it is like, um, you know, uh, the, the movie Blade Runner was rather prophetic, I think, in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, uh, it's, it's my hometown, but I don't know if I sometimes feel like it is anymore. So, yeah. you know, I, I prefer to be moving mm -hmm. than, uh, in, a, in a car or a bus or a van with uh, you know, four wheels underneath my feet, and that's a, a pretty good definition of, of freedom for me. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the, you've been asked this, I'm sure, many times over the years, people have asked you about the characters in your songs and the stories in your mm -hmm. songs and stuff like that, and how much of that is life you've lived, how much of that is, is fantasy, and kind of where that separation lies. Yeah, that's hard to say, because um, a lot of the songs that I've written, um, they're about people I know, and, and then well, almost equal measure about people I've never met. Mm -hmm. So um, it's always constantly, you know, cross-pollinating as to what a real experience is and which is, and the one that I've imagined. But um, at the end of the day, when I'm singing the songs, they're all absolutely real to me, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talk about all this product you kind of have. We can sell some DVDs for you and stuff. There, oh, too. yes. Because <laughs> you've had a lot going uh -huh. on in terms of the Holiday and Dirt DVD mm -hmm. and the video collection as well. I can just talk about just putting this stuff out this last year and how yeah, exciting well, that's been. Um, there's been a lot that, that has come out, yeah, in the last year. Um, well, first there was, of course, the new record Snakebite that came out summer of last year, but then um, there's a new DVD that came out uh, that was um, a, a collection of films that some folks made for a record that I put out a couple of years ago, and they made their, their own films of this, so we thought we'd package that up as the the Holiday and Dirt uh, DVD, which is from that record, and it's a, a collection of films. And um, you know, I think that uh, the internet's been really good for for people like myself because it's a great way for people to find you. You know, and uh, you know, uh, I I I've been you know had had a website for oh maybe ten years now, and I was lucky that when I did go and and uh, uh, you know uh, request the name uh, StanRidgeway.com. No one had really taken that one yet, <laughs> so I got lucky right on. <laughs> you, you, you kind of half joke, but you know, honestly, there could have been. There could I, have been a... I am half joking. Yeah. My life is a half a joke. <laughs> but but uh, yeah, you know, that's where a lot of the action comes down, Adam. Is it is it Stanridgeway.com? Very good, very good. Talk about what it's like to put out this collection of videos. People have, I know a lot of your fans will wanting to mm -hmm. see this stuff for years and have bad old weird VHS copies mm -hmm. of it at home. So how exciting is it to? You know, throw in the old wall of voodoo stuff. Was there a time when you wanted to kind of distance yourself from that era? Is it you're more comfortable bringing that out now as part of a? Well, I consider it. I consider everything. You know, every song is just kind of part of a symphony. You know, and it's just uh, I don't really make any demarcation between what I did uh, years ago and what I'm doing now. But um, I, I guess enough of enough things have piled up, or it seemed like a good idea to put everything together in a, you know, in one uh, package for for people to get. And, um, you know, it's a little bit like a, like an old scrapbook for me. That I can each song has a memory. Each 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 uh, instance has some slice of time that uh, you know that I'm reminded of. So um, I, I guess what you I am more comfortable with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What are some of the wildest memories looking back at maybe any of your video shoots solo or with the band that pop into your head? Well. Um, I think there's one that was pretty wild. It was, oh, it must have been 10 or 15 years ago. You know, we used to travel in a van, and we would um, rent a trailer that we'd hitch to the back, you know. And uh, one late night drive, while I was driving, and uh, someone in the passenger seat there uh, 
might have been Pietra, and uh, she said, Stan, you know, someone's trying to pass us on the right. And I said, they can't do that on a two-lane highway like this. I looked out the window, it, it was the trailer. And it, it had come unhitched, and it was like following us, like right next to the, to the van. And um, so uh, it hit this bump and just exploded, and um, we were pretty close to having a a really bad time yeah. with that, but uh, that was pretty pretty weird. That was pretty exciting. Yeah, we yeah. lost a lot of equipment that day. That's not good. No, it's not been a bad comedy. That's least, one. Yeah, at least you're all right. You mentioned you had to talk about working closely with with your mm -hmm. wife. That's I work closely with my wife. Mm -hmm. It's mostly a good experience. What's it like for you? Well, Pietro and I have known each other for quite a long time. I guess even before Walla Voodoo, and um. Uh, we're both musicians and we both enjoy playing music, so a lot of it just works out fine. Mm -hmm. I think uh, there might be a time or two where maybe, um, you know, there's a misplaced uh, article that maybe we think the other is like hidden someplace and, and um, we're convinced that that's what's happened and, you know, a sock or maybe a pair of glasses, but um, eventually it ends up and, you know, the blame is on you because you put it someplace, but there's really, I, I don't know, there's really no problem for us right. uh, playing together. We have a lot of fun doing it. Yeah. Talk about the new stuff you're working on. You have a new record you're working on now. What can we look forward to? How's the direction going? There's a I Perry think, the Pope song I want to ask you about, too. Yeah, I think the, the new record's probably going to be a little more um, electric. And uh, the last record was really more acoustic. And this one will shift gears a bit, and it'll be a bit, a bit more electric, I think. But, uh, you know, all records have their own way of uh, coming to life. You know, you could have an idea of where, where you want them to go or what you're going to include. And eventually, the record itself takes over and kind of makes itself, it has its own idea. And so I've, I've learned to kind of just let it happen as opposed to uh, trying to anticipate what it's going to be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Talk about this Buried the Pope song that you put out on the net for people to kind of enjoy. Mm -hmm. kind, of time, kind of timely, obviously. Yeah, well, yeah, Buried the Pope. Um, yeah, that's, a, that's a, a free available download at stanridgeway.com. But um, I guess we just, you know, uh, with all the, the media and the, uh, you know, Pope, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, things going on in Rome and stuff. We have some friends in Rome, and they asked me, they said, well, Stan, why don't you just write a song about the Pope if you're talking about it here? So I said, okay, then I will. So it was kind of a challenge, I guess, to these folks that we've uh, toured with in Rome. And um, we just did it in a day, and I figured we'd just let it go, you know. And so maybe it'll, it'll just work its way through the Internet like some sort of audio virus or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, John was mentioning, you know, Bartek, and I've interviewed some of your contemporaries mm -hmm. over the last couple of years. Just wondering, in terms of people like Danny Elfman or Mark Mothersbaugh, the Male Brothers, stuff like that, mm -hmm. they were all kind of around the same time. How many of these guys, you guys do parallel careers in some ways, and you're LA guys. Have you stayed in contact with any of them? Do you follow what they're doing? Or um, I, I'm, I'm always interested in, like, the, uh, you know, <laughs> the, the old school that we, that we all, uh, you know, uh, grew up with in Los mm -hmm. Angeles, so yeah, I keep I keep in touch with them. Uh, it's not often that we get together. We, we, you know, uh, we're all so busy doing stuff and playing around and, and everything. But every now and then, I'll run into to uh, Danny or, or uh, you know uh, 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 people from the old days and stuff. And it's like you know, it's like a high school reunion that happens suddenly. You know, and we talk about things and stuff. And mm -hmm. So I mean, it's just it's it's nice to see that everybody's still making music. You know. Mm -hmm. um, the trick in, in I think, uh, you know, staying involved in music is that you have to really do it for the love of it, yeah. and the the the, uh, the reward of it is simply itself. It's 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 the idea of doing music, the the doing of it. Um, what happens after you make it, um, and it goes out there? Uh, it's like a pair of shoes that go out walking, you know, that you've made. Uh, you have no idea who's going to be wearing them, and even if you write a song about, you know, a dog and you think it's the best song you ever wrote about a dog, there's going to be a certain amount of people that are going to say it's about a cat. And there's nothing you can do about it. And so that's an interesting thing that happens with, with art and music. Was there a time that that frustrated you more? Can I stop you a second? I got a yeah.